Welcome to End of Night Watch. I'm your host, Giselle. I know you're thinking, isn't this supposed to be a trivia show? Well, that was Night Watch. This is End of Night Watch. Completely different. I can see where it's different. On this show, we are going to be talking with our resident Game of Thrones expert, Patrick. Hello. Steven. Hello. I just want to say, first of all, that you guys clearly don't take this show seriously. Nobody else came in costume. Listen, I'm alone in here. I tried to ignore your presence in that. I'm wearing that is. I'm wearing two layers of leather, as well as a fur cape. And you are also hotter than the rest. That's right. Of us. I am hotter. No, no, no. I am hotter. You're correct. <laughs> Winter you guys, is not coming. People uh, like it when you put effort uh, in it. Whatever. And Patrick, <laughs> we will be recapping every episode of the final season. So, before we begin, let's take a quick look at last week's episode. the most important character from last week's episode. Mm-hmm. Patrick, what did you bring? Okay, well, um, I don't know about most important character, but I think that he was more important than, than people realize. And you can probably tell what this is in my, in my action figure. I see it. You see it? You know, what it is? I don't want to ruin it. Oh. Right? It's, it's a Theon Greyjoy. Right? Yeah. Because you see it's, it's gray obvious. in color, obviously. Yeah. And yeah. Um, he's the ironborn. This is um, it's definitely iron, I'm pretty sure. Um, but yeah, and he's well rounded. He's it's been he's well, been through a lot. Yeah. yeah, is he really well rounded? Right? <laughs> he let, is. Let him, let him have this. He's let a, him have this. Listen, and I feel he needs to redeem himself at some point. Mm. We've seen him get forgiveness um, from John. Um, and he was re- uh, John reassured him about his his doubts of who he was. You know, was he a Stark? Was he a Greyjoy? And John was like, "Hey, why why can't you be both?" You know. Well, because like that, that's not actually iron; that's aluminum. But please, okay. okay. Just, I'm just, just saying. Okay. Listen. Ooh, perfect. Anyway, so you know, I think that definitely he's gonna have a bigger role than than people realize because I, I st- I'm still not satisfied with with everything that he went through. He needs to redeem himself. Like he needs to do something to show that he he's a different Theon now. Um, well, my I, action figure still better than yours, Steven. What? what? Did you bring? Oh, first what of all, I have to say that that's not that's not really an action figure. All right. So mm-hmm. I, what I have is an authorized action figure. Oh. Right. This is like unreleased. Right. No one else has seen this oh. yet. Okay, here we go. Wow. Here we go. I don't know if you can see it. Against the black on my hand, but are you serious? Wow. There it is. That's painful. Can you you figure out who it is, right? <sighs> That's right, Brad Stark. Right, Brad Stark. Yep. It is so obvious. Right, yep. it is stoic mm. and some would say resilient, mm. like he is. Um, what? It's very sharp. Let him have it. Let him have it. Sharp, mm-hmm. you know, and it has a magnetic personality. So, <laughs> like, I okay. think that definitely sums up right. Brian in a nutshell. Magnetic. Um, sure. At least this is official merchandise, guys. Not our chat. It all started with Brian, and then we see at the end of the episode, it kind of ties it up neatly. It's like, ooh, I feel like I've come full circle. Like we finally gonna get justice, justice, because Brian was pushed out the window by Jamie, and then Jamie turns around and he's like, oh my goodness, what's that? Bam! It's this. When we come back, we are going to get more in depth on the first episode of the last season. See you when we come back.
The Met will be hosting its annual ball, and we are going to rob it. Maybe you just need someone watching your back. Like a partner. started to take a liking to her around season five right mm -hmm. but then it's like th she's being portrayed more and more as this power hungry person so she strayed from the the socialist princess that we all loved you know this giving out justice and yeah. freeness and all this yeah. stuff mm -hmm. and then now she's turned into something else um it's very it's odd because she's hung up on everybody bending the knee Right? John still got abandoned knee. And in the words of Sizzler, power down doing what? Right? But oh I'm just saying, right? It's like everything is bend the knee, bend the knee, bend the knee. And if you don't bend the knee, she's like, she can't show you no mercy. Mm -hmm. And it's like, she sees herself as a dragon because she's like mother of dragons. Yeah. So when she says that to Sansa, she's saying she can do whatever the hell she wants. Right, right. Definitely. Essentially. That's the, that's the subtext of that, that yeah. piece there. And so it's like, the reason why I think that line sticks out so much, because even if you don't like think of it directly, you're like, oh, oh, I guess you, you're trying to show how bad you is or whatever. And like, you know, Sansa, Sansa thinks she's the ice queen. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I agree definitely. Um, uh, it, it was more so her commenting on herself mm -hmm. than the actual dragon. She's like, yeah, you know, I'm the mother of dragons. These are my children. And, and she considers herself a dragon, like Stephen said. So... When she's saying that, she's not talking about them. She, that was kind of like, you know, yeah, her being so snarky with Sansa. Right. And you know, also, I'm I'm already bored of that. I'm tired of that whole the cat fight between her and Sansa. I'm over it. I it's just, only been one episode, right? And I'm already over <laughs> it. So I I don't want that to continue. I mean, maybe the first half of the second episode. We I can don't think see we needed it all in the, in the second right? episode. And then they move on or they get over it. But yeah. I that, think that's what that was about. And see, I, I think it's gonna be so problematic because it's like she's so hung up on her being the rightful heir to something. Mm -hmm. And I kind of, I kind of like that though. I, I, at first, I saw it coming, right. and I was like, okay, why are they, why are they changing her into this sort of power hungry thing? Right. But I, I feel like it's still, it's a callback to the Mad King, because you're thinking, okay, well, how did she, he get to that point? Right. And is she gonna get to that point? But the, the. They're not laying it on too thick. But they're, they're showing it subtly. Like People are looking at it like, why is, why is she acting this way? But I think she's supposed to act this way mm -hmm. because we're supposed to think, hey, is right. she going to become like... But it's not like a know? madness or, or sickness. It's just like a right. bad with power. Right. Whereas like, you start to do irrational things. Because even if you think about it, and they made the comparison in the show, where it's like she lit the Tully's on fire, mm -hmm. right? And what was the Mad King known for? He let a bunch of random people inside. Yeah, the, she, the place she on loves fire. burning people alive. Right, right. and so it's like, and so it's like, you see the parallels where it's like, oh, suddenly. Anyway, in terms of the quote, it just it seems like a long line of of empty things that she says because everything seems to more or less be like a prepared statement. If she was inside, 
not Miss Bahamas, I guess Miss Westeros. Uh, yeah. Right? Whereas, like, everything is, well, my platform is fire and destruction, Ben Lee. Yeah. The second quote Nothing lasts. The spider says this while watching John and Daenerys. What does that mean for you? Um, I think this one was was a bit more, um, I guess, easy to decipher because they're looking directly at John and Danny, and so. Danny, I didn't know you noticed on a personal level, but go ahead. Hey, That's a dog. Yeah, roll a dog. Yeah. Nicknames here. Yeah. But you know, so they're obviously looking directly at them. And so that literally verse telling us this is this isn't gonna last. Like right now they're all happy, the two lovebirds, everything's great, there's rainbows and sunshines and soon it's it's gonna change. And we have six episodes or five left. So we know definitely I'm I'm thinking by episode three there's gonna be some trouble in paradise. And the, with the quote itself when it's like this won't last well, it's least, gonna be a yeah. falling out because he might try to like bend the knee or say oh well you're the queen or whatever but she can't have that clear contradiction where it's like her power is dependent on him yeah and so i don't think that she's gonna be willing to have that whole like they'll say oh let them get married and then it'll be fine but it's like she's not gonna want that because right. like the, the power will come power. from him not yeah, her yeah, after right. she finds out what well, she will because now everybody's gonna know I know you guys would have seen this on social media, especially repost by females. So the quote goes, you want a whore? Buy one. You want a queen? Earn her. What are y'all thoughts? I think you put too much passion inside that. <laughs> um, I just, um, the, my issue with it is, she say all that, and then right afterwards, they let the accident yeah, do it. So I that's just moat. <laughs> the irony. Alright, Steven, you were great. But now. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, Steven, you were great. But now we have to take a break. Stay tuned for more of End of Nightwatch. Five more days, everybody. And it's going to be No Filter Show, presented by Rev. It's you and us together, and so much is happening. I need a drink. <laughs> and we're back. <laughs> this is the moment that everyone all around the world has been waiting for. Mm -hmm. The final end of this show. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> sorry, the final season. Continue. I'm right, ready. Right. Okay. Steven, can I, can I finish my thought? Go ahead. Oh, okay. With that being said, let's have a moment of silence for those that we have lost in the first episode, on screen and off. Yeah. Who do you think will be the next? Got a part a little for the homies. This. Yeah, <laughs> I just make a shot because you're a cop and I just throw a mask it up. There's nothing in that cop. Can, can, well, we get back, can we get back to it? Sorry, go ahead. Go ahead. Patrick? Um, who do you... Who I think will be the next? Yes, to be killed off. <sighs> Man, you know, I, listen, I, I really want to give a better answer, but I honestly don't know. I don't know who is going to be you next. You haven't given a answer. No, that is my answer. I don't. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> but, um, like, I also feel like a lot of people are saying, okay, this person's gonna die. That person's gonna die. You know, they're naming off all the main, a lot of main characters, and like, oh, they're not gonna survive. But I may be foolish in believing so, but I'm optimistic, and I feel like, I don't know. I feel like most people will survive, right? Even though that might be an, not a very popular opinion. Um, or, I even if they don't survive, I think people, a lot of them are going to live longer than people expect. I don't think they're going to be picking off people episode by episode. I think maybe in that giant battle, that's when you'd have, like, the casualties ha occur. 
but I think most people are going to survive and tell that point, you know, because there's no point in fighting. Like, there's no point in the characters, um, you know, killing each other off before the, the main threat, which is the Night King, comes around. So I think uh, whoever's going to die, they're going to die at the hands of the White Walkers and the Night King. Okay, Patrick, with all that being said, great, by the way, who do you think will be the next Who's going to die next week? <laughs> Who, who was going to die next week? Okay, yes. fine. If you want to name yes. Arya, because I don't okay. like her. <laughs> so there we go. That's let's, the name. Let's kill her. And and the kid that died um, in the scary. beginning, that should have been Ollie. He should have burnt. What? Because he's... I hated Ollie. Ollie is which one? The one that stabbed John, that little bastard. What, Isn't he dead? Yes, but he should have burned. Like That should have been his death. I didn't like to just hang in. No, no. All he needed to die, die. Not just like regular die. It's not, it's not a death pool of like people you want to resurrect and murder. It's people yes. who are going well, to he die. He should come back as a white. So John Snow could kill him again. That's what I want to happen. I want to see Ollie as a white walker. And then John says like, oh. And, you know, they have this connection, and he sees him, and he's like, oh, he's Ollie, and he just decapitates him. Patrick, I feel as though we saw two sides of you just now. It's weird, but okay. we're, we're going to have a conversation about that right. later. My Steven, heart. who do you um, think will be killed off? Boy, this is rough. Could you give me a piece of napkin? No. So what? How Are do you, you really like? asking for Yes. Yeah. I'm bringing him a cookie and I'm like, what's that? What? Alright. Sorry, go ahead. Ask the question again. So, Stephen, yes. before I was interrupted, mm -hmm. who do you think? Is going to die next episode? Yes. That is a difficult one because I think that everybody tends to go by who you want right. to die. And it's like, I think they're kind of leading us on and making us think that Jamie's going to die. But we know Jamie's not yeah, going to die. Yeah, which makes us feel like it's not going to be. Dead. Right. I yeah. feel like Jamie's definitely not going to die because it'd be too easy. Because right? Because even like how they killed Peter, they didn't lead up to it. This is like, boop, he's that was, dead. That was a sad day for me. Oh, my God. That's, that's my yeah, sword you know, It's my boy. Um, you know? It's my boy dog. I don't feel like any of the Lannisters are going to die because there's so few of them. So they want to save that. And they want to make it a big splash. I think that the Lannisters are going to kill each other. And they might let Tyrion live, but Tyrion probably is going to die by mistake or something. Mm -hmm. um, ideally, I'd see Tyrion dying in battle. Or because his sister tried yeah, to kill him. They'll, they'll have a standoff. Him, Cersei, and Right, Jamie and Jamie a Western kills Cersei. With a crossbow. Because she's <laughs> a, yeah, right, he's something cool. along those lines. Yeah. Um, but out of the people who I think are going to die next episode, it's going to be a non-important character, clearly. It might be some more people from the Ironborn Islands, because nobody cares about them. I think it's going to be periphery people. Definitely. He's going to kill somebody important probably in the third or fourth episode, but that's how I see it going now. Well, guys, we are out of time for this show. Nobody sad? It's for the week. Tears, I mean. Okay, Patrick. So, that's it for this episode, guys. I'm sorry. But we'll be back again next week. Make sure to tune in on Sunday for the second episode of the last season of Game of Thrones. And also, guys, subscribe with Rev to HBO. If you're not a subscriber, hey, it's time for you to do it today. Call this number quick. 601-8992. That's 601-8992. And get your subscription today. Thanks. And do enjoy. <laughs> and now your watch has come to an end. That's what you want me to say? I'm, I'm confused. Yes. Oh. <laughs>